So the last thing I'm going to look at are what are some of the new strategies, challenges, and questions that communities working in biological science, technology, and security are asking, and things that we could really use your help in being able to help us under, uh, understand and confront in the future. So one particular area that interests me and others is how we think about designing securable uh, supply chains in biotechnology. So if we're increasingly developing the capacity to uh, more easily spread biological information and materials, how do we ensure that we have the right amount of centralization or distribution of those capacities that we can actually monitor and guide um, the development and find out when breaches occur? This is not a trivial challenge um, in terms of um, looking at the distribution of other technologies, for instance, cyber technology, it's not sure that the development of this infrastructure is something that can be intentionally designed. Moreover, um, one of the challenges here is that uh, biological substrate, so the stuff that biology uh, that we're working with, has already taken over the world. <laughs> biology is everywhere, so there's limits to how much we can uh, control the source material, meaning genetic information. One other challenge is whether or not we can anticipate especially risky experiments. So again, this is whether or not we can actually categorize or classify the types of experimentation or manipulation of biological systems that we're performing that might cause unjustified risks. Some of these types of risks have been looked at by a number of committees um, scientifically as well as political leaders to examine what are the um, ways in which we can categorize different types of harms and risks um, both to people and to the environment. So a related question to being able to um, discern or anticipate risky experiments is whether or not we're able to then classify um, the sort of risks beyond just the particular biological agent. And in this case, what I mean is, instead of saying this particular strain of flu is too risky to work with or should be worked with at a higher containment level, we might look at what are the particular genetic functions, the biological functions within the flu that make it pathogenic, and be able to develop classification schemes um, that are able to say we should work with this agent at a, um, a higher safety level or not, or we won't allow the shipping or use of these particular genetic functions instead of this particular flu. Another question related to this is whether or not we can actually regulate the spread of these particular materials at all, or rather whether or not we need to focus on assessing the types of people and the processes by which the creation of new genetic functions occurs. In this case, we'd be asking, who might we give access to biological information, or what types of processes in terms of the ways in which we bi manipulate biological systems should we be putting additional controls around? Now, many will say that we actually can't control biology at all. <laughs> and so in this case, one of the challenges is whether or not we can monitor, at least, the diffusion of capabilities. So are we able to use sophisticated tools in terms of tracking the types of communities and what they're doing? Uh, in this case, many different strategies are being taken, including law enforcement communities working directly with scientific communities in order to develop ch um, channels of communication. So one example is the FBI is actually sponsoring the largest genetic engineering competition in, so that each new um, scientist that is working within this community can become um, an additional person to help inform the law enforcement communities of the uh, forefront of biological science and whether or not they see anything that might be unusual. An even larger challenge of political leaders is whether or not we can develop systems to more effectively evaluate competitiveness and security trade-offs when we're making investments in new biological science and technology. Because inherently, because of the dual-use trade-off, um, there will be certain capacities that we want uh, that will contribute or detract from both of these areas. So it may be 
that in developing the supply chains for biomanufacturing, we need to consider whether or not the intermediaries in that supply chain are here domestically or abroad, and then how we develop certain priorities in terms of health, energy, and the environment. The most difficult challenge amongst all of these is whether or not we can spread norms of responsibility amongst the community. So how can we, again, ensure that a community working in science and technology is overwhelmingly um, tasked towards making biology constructive instead of destructive? And whether or not how we know we're doing better um, at being responsible with biotechnology, how we know we are making ourselves more or less vulnerable over time is something that will need a lot more thought and a lot more people who can be versed both in biotechnology and in security. Thank you.